Welcome to BlackstoneBass.com, where the bite is on. Hey, fishing season's over. I know I only came in second. I know that's first loser, but hey, it's time now to get back on the 1996 24-foot Albemarle Project. Hey, last thing we were doing was working on this uh, flywheel housing here uh, on this 350 Chevy. As you can see, we got the burns put in. It looks real nice. I had to come down to my friend's shop here, Lewis Jones at Automotive Excellence. He's one of our sponsors at BlackstoneBass.com. Hey, I'll put a link in the description to his website. You should check him out. He does all kind of cars, trucks. His major specialty is diesel mechanics. Is that right, Lewis? Yes. We're going to take this rod, and Lewis suggests to put in the bead blaster to get some of this rust off just to clean it up. So we're going to try that now. Fresh out of the bead blaster. Wow, it looks brand new. Good deal, Lewis. A few little pits where it rusted, but we're gonna to try to get it with a little emery crawl. What what grit is that? Do you know? Eighty. Eighty. Okay. Getting all the parts laid out here. Right, yeah. Okay, we're going with the first seal here. It goes all the way down into the bottom. Let me get a light on this. It's about pushed out with my hand. Yeah, this one ain't too bad. What yeah, we got all we're trying to get all fancy. This one will just slide right in. First seal goes all the way down in, which goes up against the engine. Okay, here, here's my bearing. I got a total seal bearing this time instead of this old style that shows the uh, bearings. It should be better holding the grease in. It's made. It's uh, SKF from Motion Industries in Richmond. Uh, it's about thirty some dollars. And we gotta take this little, this is a, this is a keeper. He said take that off because yep. that was not needed. So this one's gonna be basically pretty much just like so. Okay, so we're putting the parts in order now. Lewis is showing Snap me. Snap ring, bearing, and then the other seal. And these two go last, on there before the seal? Yep. Yeah, when you need a tool, just come to your friend's shop. Anybody need a rat, uh, socket? <laughs> Look at this drawer, Lewis. I want to get, I want, I want to get back in here. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> trying to push the bearing on now to make sure that we don't mess it up. So we're putting it in the vise and uh, we're going to gingerly push it down on to get the uh, bearing onto the rod. And then we'll start putting the snap rings in and the last seal, hopefully. See how easy it is. It's not going too bad. If it don't, we'll put it in the press. It wasn't too bad coming off, so. There you go. Looks like a winner. Chicken dinner. All right, going with the uh, first snap ring, the small one that holds the bearing in place. Bingo. Looks good. All right. Now what we need to put it inside the housing. Is that next? Yeah, that's what's next. You put it in there over there. I'll just put a little bit on my finger. And All right, we'll there. put just a touch of oil on here. And what's the reason again, Lewis? Just so the seals won't run dry. When okay, you when you first fire it up. This bad boy is looking good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's going right down in there. Bloop, bingo. Looks real nice. I had to go a little bit further to get down past that second snap ring groove. Uh, it's a little bit deceiving. It's very tight. Not a lot of room in there, as you see. All right, this technically would be the second snap ring going back in. The smaller one held the bearing in place on the shaft, and this keeps the bearing and the shaft from sliding this away. Okay, so you see that? What I like to do is just give it a little tap, make sure it is. See, see where yep. it jumped in there. Notice Lewis gave it a little bit of a tap to make sure that it was snapped in place good, and it did move. So good, good catch on that one. All right, next step, ring. Let's go into that top groove. And this last one goes in, which makes three snap rings, and it holds the seal in place from going too far inside. Was that correct, Lewis? Yep. 
That's it. That's it. And that place that I boogered up a little bit, I guess no issue with that. It's a little bit of a cut right there. See a little piece hanging out maybe, but I filed it down, I thought. Is that going to be an issue? I didn't see that. Now I see it. I did. I, I, I sanded it the best I could. Yeah, that's, that's pretty buggered up and pretty good. Because all that does is keep the water from going in there. Oh, okay. We got a little Permatex Ultra Gray here. Maximum torque. It's good to, it's good to know friends with, with tools and experience. We're going to fix that little spot that I buggered up there that I thought was part of the original seal. Um, and go from there, but it's looking really nice so far. That's gonna be hard to do. You mean put it on my finger and rub it in there? I have to. It ain't gonna hurt none. Get a little sloppy. That's right. I might be able to do it right here. Look at that. Did you just caulk windows for a little? <laughs> I've done a few. <laughs> That bad boy ain't going nowhere. Well, you just don't want it to leak, it's all. And it's not going to, have to burn, hurt the burn because the burn is sealed. Right, there you go. Nice job. That's too pretty to put a seal in. Right now, time for the last seal, right? Yes. And we'll be uh, putting our life jackets on. Something like that. You got any floaties? <laughs> now, this one, how we know how far it's got set up against that O ring? I mean, that's a snap ring. That snap ring. That should be it. I'll tell you what, not a lot of teeth hang out that thing, does it? Mm -mm. That looks real nice there. Beautiful, beautiful. Automotive excellence.